everyone, it's me, Lindsay, with Equip Me OT, here today to talk about how to use the restroom following a shoulder replacement, shoulder surgery, or really any injury that might impact your shoulder area, resulting in an uh, immobilized position or sling use for a period of time. This is going to usually result in having to function one-handed for a prolonged period of time, which can be very challenging for your daily function. So one area that can be particularly frustrating is completing your toileting tasks. So I wanna make sure to cover that for you here. I also have a, another set of videos that will help you with dressing, help you with sleep positioning, um, and a variety of others that I would uh, guide you to check out if you have additional questions. So let's go ahead and get started with how I would set up my bathroom for a shoulder replacement surgery. It's very important you understand how your bathroom is going to impact your recovery. And one of the big features here is you need to know how you use your surgical arm to help you throughout the uh, toileting process. So I wanted to use this bathroom as an example because as you can see, if I had my left arm surgically repaired, I would now no longer have access to my toilet paper on this side or the countertop on this side. And if I'm somebody who perhaps uses the countertop to help me come to a stand, or I have a hard time twisting to reach across to access the toilet paper, I'm going to have to make some changes to how this bathroom is set up. It's not particularly difficult and it's not particularly expensive, but what I would recommend in this situation is that you add some sort of vers versatile frame or standing frame to the toilet. I have a video that describes how to install one of these in very great detail. And basically what that would do is provide you with something on this side that you could use with your right or non-surgically repaired arm to help support yourself to pull up to a stand. This is really important. Not everybody needs that, but a lot of times early on in the surgical recovery process, when pain is a little bit high or you're a little more tired from the or groggy from the medication that you usually take early on, having something to kind of support yourself on is a really, really smart idea. So consider having that in place prior to having your surgery. Another important consideration is for your uh, hygiene. When it comes to cleaning up following a shoulder replacement, one important consideration is if you are going to be relying on your non-dominant hand for a series for a long period of time, it is challenging to do simple tasks like wiping yourself, brushing your teeth is really difficult. These are all things that we're really, really conditioned to do with our dominant side. And when we have to switch quickly, it's difficult. So I strongly recommend that if you're watching this video before you have surgery, you start practicing your hygiene, your bowel hygiene, bladder hygiene, with your non-dominant or non-surgical side before you even start. Because if you do that, you're going to set yourself up for way better success down the line. Okay, so let's talk about the toilet paper. Make sure that if you have to move your toilet paper to the other side, you don't just set a loose toilet paper roll on the floor or on a small shelf. Because if you have loose toilet paper, if you just have the roll like this, you're going to be struggling to unroll because you only really have one hand. So make sure that you invest in either a stand or a second toilet paper holder that actually puts the roll onto a stand so that you can access it one-handed. That's super important. I run into that a lot into people's homes. They considered moving the toilet paper, but they didn't get a stand for it. So very much consider getting something with a stand so it's much easier to use one-handed. Another option I really like to help with your hygiene is a bidet. Now, I have a bidet on this toilet. This is the Lux Neo 120. It installs really easily, and it's a great way to kind of reduce the burden of hygiene following a, surgical, a surgery. But always consider they have a kind of a static position for their control knobs. This one would work for me if I had my right hand available to function with my, my bidet. But again, if I had to reach over, that might not be an option for some of you. So definitely be aware of the positioning of the bidet controls. Another option I really like, this is actually a portable electric bidet. You fill this reservoir and it comes off very easily with whatever temperature water you prefer. A lot of people prefer kind of a lukewarm tap water before you sit down to use the bathroom. Simply screw it on and then it has two buttons, high and low, and it provides you with a steady stream of water that you can guide and aim to help yourself with hygiene. You can enter from the front or from the back, whichever you're more comfortable with, um, but this is a really nice option that you can use one-handed with your non-dominant side that might help you get cleaner easier. So definitely something to consider if you're a bidet user or considering using a bidet for your surgical recovery. Okay, so now that we've discussed our hygiene, let's talk about our clothing. It's really important that you understand that clothing selection, especially in the first few weeks following surgery, is going to be very much function over fashion. You want things that are comfortable, you want um, waistbands that are uh, going to stay put without having to tie, 
or a button or snap or zip. Definitely choose things that are going to stay on your hips without any additional assistance. Um, and that's going to make your life a lot easier. Same thing with underwear. A lot of times I recommend for my clients that they select either underwear that they already have that are a little bit loose um, and that would pull up easily, especially for women's underwear because they tend to be a little bit tighter. If you select a size up from what you normally wear, the waistband and things are going to be a lot easier to manage. They don't roll on you quite as easily. So when you're managing one-handed and having to go side to side, you're not fighting with that elastic waistband all the way up. Same thing with the pants. I don't recommend leggings necessarily unless those leggings have um, a fairly loose waist and come up and down pretty easily. I prefer kind of a loose fitting sweatpant. Um, these are by far my most comfortable sweatpants and are um, going to work really well for this. So let me show you how I would one handed pull my pants down for my toileting and then pull them back up all with one hand. Okay. So from the toilet, I would pull my shirt up and you can use your hand as much as you want as long as the rest of your arm is immobilized. So you can use it to hold your shirt up and out of the way so that it's not getting in the, in the way of your waistband. And then you're simply going to work the pants one-handed down and it's really important that you don't let them fall to the floor because that's going to make your life so much easier. So just down to about the knees. At this point, I'm gonna spread my legs apart just a little bit to hold the waistband in place. If I had something to support myself on, I would then sit on the toilet like that. The pants are still easily accessible, so I complete my toileting, I complete my hygiene. The pants are right here. I'm gonna stand, and if I, if I can, I'll hold on to the pants. If not, I'll hold on to my handrail or grab bar or whatever I'm using to help me stand. And I'm going to keep, again, keep my legs a little bit apart, pulling against that waistband so they don't fall to the floor. I do always keep a, uh, a reacher close by when I'm in the bathroom, just in case those pants do fall all the way to the floor or the underwear fall all the way to the floor. Then I'm going to stand up and I'm going to simply work. And again, I've got my legs apart a little bit so the pants aren't falling down on me. And obviously I have another pair of pants on underneath, so this is, is a little easier because there's a little friction between the material. But you're simply going to work it up kind of all the way around until the pants are in position. So that looks fairly easy when I do it. And I do recognize that following surgery when you're sore and uncomfortable that the process can take a little longer. So again, I recommend if you're watching this video ahead of time, Practice this a little bit. Practice this strategy of one-handed clothing management before you find yourself in a surgical recovery. It will make a world of difference for you. So there, so there you have it. The strategy for using the restroom following a shoulder replacement or injury where you're immobilized. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. If you got some value out of this video, consider giving me a thumbs up. And as always, if you need more information on how to stay safe and independent in your home and community, consider subscribing to Equip Me OT. Thank you.